David conquered Jerusalem and made it the capital of all the tribes of Israel. But it was in the time of Solomon that Jerusalem acquired the status of a perfect city. Solomon's name comes from the Hebrew word Shalom, which means peace and completeness. Most often Bible scholars portray Solomon as the figure who built the temple of God of Israel. But the temple is just a crown on the head of mighty construction projects that show this legendary king's glory and wisdom. I invite you to the next episode of the History of Jerusalem in which we will present the profile of the third king of Israel. At the same time, do not forget to subscribe to this channel to receive notifications about the next episodes on YouTube. At the end of today's episode, you will have a chance to see Solomon's Jerusalem in 3D. So let's begin. If ever there was a man who had everything the human heart could desire, it was Solomon. Most importantly, he had wisdom, which he received from God himself. This wisdom allowed him to write 3,000 parables and 1,005 songs. For comparison, Mozart wrote 626 pieces, which is considered an extraordinary result as it means that he wrote about 18 songs during the year. Solomon is believed to be the author of many psalms, parables and ecclesiastes that we find in the Bible. Of course we read that Solomon was famous in the ancient world. The rulers of other countries made pilgrimages to Jerusalem to primarily listen to Solomon's wisdom. What else Solomon had? Wealth. Wealth that stood out even from such powers like Egypt or Assyria. During his reign, we read that he received 25 tons of gold for each of the 39 years of his rules, which in 2021 would be worth billions of dollars. Combined with the impossible riches amounts from taxes and commerce, the biblical ruler's fortune could exceed $2 trillion making today's officially richest man in the world, Elon Musk, with net worth of $185 billion, ridiculous. And so Solomon was about 1,000 times richer than Elon Musk. In the Bible, we read that Solomon had so much gold that silver was not considered even a precious material. Recent archaeological research shows that many of the mines found in the Timna National Park were used during Solomon's time. Today Timna National Park is a nice place to visit to hike in the south of Israel. I really enjoyed it when I visited. I can't also not mention 700 wives and 300 concubines that Solomon had and were certainly a proof of his power. Of course, women in ancient times were often treated as trophies and a way of making favorable political deals with other rulers. The only wife named is Naama the Amorite, mother of Solomon's succeeder Rahaboam. The most visible evidence of the uniqueness of Solomon's time were, of course, the building projects in Jerusalem. During his reign, Solomon built the forest of the House of Lebanon, the Column Hall, the Throne Room, the Royal Palace, the Court, and, of course, the legendary temple. As promised at the end of this episode, I invite you to a virtual tour of Solomon's Jerusalem. The territory ruled by Solomon included the land that God had promised Abraham. 
David began the work of uniting all the tribes of Israel into one integral political unit. Through the perfect sense of a warrior, David conquered large areas, enlarging the borders of Israel. Yet, it was Solomon again who completed the work and compiled all the territories promised to Jacob's descendants. Therefore, the period of Solomon's reign can be described as the Golden Age of Israel history. Never in history did Israel attain the status that Solomon had earned. Some even believe that Solomon's kingdom is a picture of the promised messianic era in which the Messiah will resit on the throne of David, will reign in Jerusalem over the whole world and people from many countries will make pilgrimages to Israel to admire his wisdom and majesty. After the fall of Israel, many prophets announced that such a time will come and the glory of God will return to the Lord's sanctuary on Zion. What distinguishes Solomon from the king's Messiah is the apparent weakness that David's son exhibits later in his life. The biblical narrative notes with disapproval that Solomon allowed his foreign wives to import their national deities by building the temples to them. Such behavior leads to idolatry and the division of the kingdom after the death of the monarch. Therefore, he is not the perfect ruler who is to rule forever on the throne of David. If you are looking for a depressing book, well, try Ecclesiastes, written by Solomon or a person representing his character and positions. As we mentioned, Solomon had everything you can imagine. Wisdom, power, fame, wealth, woman and peace. And yet in the book Solomon writes that everything we achieve in this life is worthless. Solomon had everything that this life could offer, and yet he found no satisfaction. Perhaps it is a lesson for us in a world where we often follow the things that we think will bring us happiness. But do they really? I find the story of Solomon fascinating. Few question Solomon's existence as a king of Israel, but many doubt that his kingdom was as spectacular as the Bible describes. For centuries, no historical evidence of the structures described in the Bible was found in Jerusalem. Of course, you must remember that Jerusalem was conquered and destroyed dozens of times, so there could not be much left from Solomon's period, that is the 10th century BC. But still, we should find something. The breakthrough was the archaeological work led by Eliot Mazar, who in 2010 announced the discovery of the parts of the ancient walls around the city of David, which she believes date back to the 10th century BC. According to Mazar, this is the most significant structure we have from the first temple period in Israel. And this means that at this time in the 10th century, there was a regime in Jerusalem capable of making such a construction. The section of the wall is approximately 70 meters long and 6 meters high, and it is located in the area known as Ophel, between the city of David and the south wall of Jerusalem's Temple Mount. Additionally to the wall, Mazar discovered the inner gate leading to the royal quarter of the city, a royal building connected to the gate, and a corner tower that overlooks much of the Kidron Valley. Here you can see a 3D model that was created by me based on the archaeological findings. I hope it helps you to imagine this place.
Finally, I leave you with two intriguing facts about Solomon. First, he was not David's firstborn. Moreover, he was a child from David's relationship with Bathsheba, who David subducted and sentenced her husband to certain death. Second, Solomon is the subject of many other later references and legends, especially in the first century apocryphal writing known as the Solomon's Testament. In the New Testament, he is presented as a teacher of wisdom, suppressed only by Jesus. According to the Gospels, Jesus says that Solomon was dressed in glory, but that glory was not greater than a simple plant as lilies in the field. In the extra-biblical circles, Solomon also became known as a magician and an exorcist, with number of amulets and medallions dating from Hellenistic period and invoking his name. Thank you for your attention. I hope you enjoyed this episode. As always, I encourage you to comment. You can also subscribe to this channel to stay informed about the next monthly episodes on Jerusalem history. Finally, I leave you with the promised presentation of Jerusalem in Solomon's Day. Have a good time and see you soon!